because in the beginning you're not like they say in the beginning you're not the ceo you're just the employee until you start hiring and still until you start building your team and doing right. all that then you start to be the owner ladies and gentlemen get ready to be inspired as we dive deep into the world of commercial financing with a true powerhouse in the industry. Welcome to Unleash Your Power, a podcast that empowers others to get what they want and achieve their wildest dreams. I am your host, Jeffrey Pinzon, and today we have the great pleasure of interviewing a truly remarkable woman who is making waves in the financial world, in the commercial financial world. She is the founder and CEO of CRE Capital Investments, a reputable company, a trusted company. So get ready, guys, as we dive deep into her story. So <laughs> Rachel Garcia, thank you for being on our podcast today. Get ready, guys, because she has a lot of things that she's going to be sharing with us today. So Rachel, let's let's jump right into it. Can you tell us a little bit about your upbringing? Who was Rachel back in high school? Yes, thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. I'm happy to share. And uh, gosh, <laughs> we dove right in, right? So my childhood and my upbringing. Ah, where do I start? So growing up, I, um, I always knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I, um, when I first graduated high school, I started working for a, uh, for a bridal store. And then I started managing uh, bridal stores. And one of them was actually going out of business. So when they went out of business, I took that as an opportunity to start my own business. I've always been into fashion. I love fashion. I mm -hmm. love to dress well. I feel like the way that you dress presents you, presents you and tells Absolutely. you a lot about the person. So... I opened up my woman, I, excuse me, I opened up my own woman's clothing boutique at nice. 20 years old. I what saved city? up in uh, Downey actually. Uh, okay. Yeah. By the Stonewood mall. Oh, wow. So I, um, so I opened up my woman's clothing boutique. And, um, so when that, one of the bridal stores went out of business, I bought everything from them, from the showcases, the mannequins, the racks, all of it. So then I found a location downy near um, near the Stonewood Mall. It was called Besso XOXO. Okay, okay, yes, yes, that's where. So in my so for my personal Instagram, Rachel underscore Besso. That's where the Besso come, excuse me, comes from. And it's uh, funny because everybody thinks that that's my last name, but I don't want to change it because it's very sentimental to me. Right. So anyway, so that's where it's that's where it came from. I. Um, I started my um, I started my business. I had it for a year, and then I got bought out. Um, these two women would they were clients of mine. They would they would come in all the time, and they were like, "Have you ever considered selling your business?" And I'm like, "Well, no, not really. Mind you, I'm 20 years old." So mm -hmm. I said, "No, not really." But I mean, if you put an offer, sure, why not? And that's when I felt. That's when I felt like, "Wow, entrepreneurship is." something different right. people see it as you know an amazing thing right who doesn't want to own their own business but they don't know what comes with owning a business there's a lot of uh trial and error right. there's a lot of um i mean i felt like i was a slave mm -hmm. i was there monday through sunday yeah. from open to close like it was just it, it was a lot for me right. especially at 20 years old and so I decided to sell it, so I got bought out. Um, so at 21, I sold it. I traveled for a year. For an entire year, I traveled. I took some time off, and I thought to myself, what do I want to do next? And I felt that when I was starting my business, I didn't know who to lean on. I didn't know how to start the business right. I didn't know the importance of opening up a checking account, having payroll, having like all these things that you need to run a business. Right. So that's when I decided, you know what? I'm going to be a business banker and help these business owners establish their own business because for myself, if I was struggling, I could only imagine, imagine the Hispanics 
that don't know they're just they're just hard workers but yeah. they don't know anything else other than just work, work hard, hard and that's it they don't know the tools and the resources that they have available to them so that's when i was like you know what i'm gonna go work for a bank and i'm gonna go um help out businesses so i started as i started in the bank as a business as a business i think it was specialist or banker at the time i don't remember but it was like to help business owners and so from there i just moved up the ladder um i was with bank of america corporate for five and a half years i was with wells fargo i was with jp morgan wow. i mean i really moved up the corporate ladder uh so it's been 11 years that i've been in commercial financing now so from business banking i went to commercial financing and that was that became my passion commercial real estate wow so uh, let's take it back because i know you mentioned the clothing store right i and it's funny because I, I had partnered up with uh there was a clothing store called the arte in downey uh -huh. and we had partnered up with the gentleman's clothes so I, I i could relate to what you're saying right now because buying inventory especially in the clothing <laughs> like you got to be selling that clothes right away because fashion is changing correct and the, the turnaround time, time. Right? and mind you i had clients i had clients that were coming in weekly and so if you don't have new inventory every week they're gonna go to the mall yeah. and i pride myself in having a boutique where I don't have the same stuff that the mall has, where you see your stuff at Forever 21, Zara, H&M, which Zara is my favorite store, but still, I wanted unique pieces at my store where they can come in and shop every week. So every week I had to stock up. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you have to sell what you, yeah. what you have to be able to get more inventory to come in. So it's it could be stressful for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it is. And, <laughs> and then you got to sell the, the, the extra stuff for wholesale so you can get it out the way so you don't right. get stuck with it. <laughs> so from right there, yeah. transitioning into the the corporate world, like what are some stuff that you learned that led you to now once you open up your own business, your own mortgage company? What are some stuff that you took from that corporate world that allowed you to build your business? I took a lot, actually. That's a great question. So... Through my entire 11 years of, of being in the corporate world, I I would deal with so many different businesses. And for me, what's important is getting to know the owner, getting to know the business. That way I'm able to, to help them best, right? Knowing their story, knowing what they need. I'm not going to give them, you know, a line of credit if I know they don't, they don't need it. So my whole my whole thing was learning about them learning about the business how they got started and all of that so that led me to where i am today uh with my with my company because i wanted to one be able to provide tools and resources for everybody and most big banks they only look for your a paper clients right they want you to have you know the best credit the best you know, the best cash flow, the best everything. So I wanted the way that I created my company is to have the tools and resources and get creative and get creative with the financing, um, be able to provide financing for new investors, for your seasoned investors and provide the best terms and rates for everybody, mm. um, depending on your scenario. So that's what I pride uh, the company in is, is being able to, be that tool for everybody not just your you know a paper clients which is what most top banks do right if you don't fit that little square box if they don't like your you. they don't like your property it is just it's just not going to happen wow can you share some stories of maybe people that you have helped out some successful stories of Maybe they, they, they weren't helped out in the corporate world, but they went with you and you were able to. That's my make every that client. <laughs> <laughs> well, share some with us. That's, uh, that's honestly my every client. I have clients that, you know, that the bank didn't want to refi for one reason or another. I have one that I'm, that I'm working with. He has a bunch of tax liens and he wants to do a cash out refi mm -hmm. to be able to pay off those tax liens. The, excuse me, the tax liens and nobody wanted to help him. I was able to get him the best terms and rates and it's a $4 million deal. Wow. Like how do banks, you know, like, like most lenders will pass on that. At least the big 
the big banks, right? So I wanted to make sure that my platform is pretty wide where I can do, you know, I can get creative. Mm -hmm. You mentioned uh, last time I I was having a conversation with you and I asked you uh, what's better, buying a single residence or a commercial building? You had mentioned a commercial building. A commercial building all day long. (laughs) Break it down for us. So uh, give me an example, right? Like let's just say me, uh, like I don't own a building yet. I'm a business owner. Mm -hmm. What are the steps that you will take me through? So it depends. Are you buying a building for yourself to owner to run your business out of it, right? Or are you buying an investment property like a multifamily, right? Mm -hmm. So let me just start with the um, with the multifamily side, right? An SFR versus multifamily. Multifamily, I feel I don't know if it's just because of me, but I just love commercial, right? And it's all a numbers game. It's all based on the assets. We look at the rent rolls and we look at the operating expenses and that's when we decide what the you know what we're able to lend on that property. Um, if you want to, if the property is not stabilized, we can do a bridge loan on it, pay for a hundred percent of the rehab, stabilize it, you refinance it, and I'm helping you, you know, with with the entire process from wow. A to Z. If you want to build a multifamily property, I can do the construction for you. Um, it just really depends on on the on the investor and what they're looking for. SFR, I don't. I don't really know that side. I don't really touch that side, but um, What's that? it's What's more that? emotional for me. Or so I feel and so I hear. It's more emotional. It's more there's more attachments, right? When you're when you're dealing with the single family, you're it's like there's a lot of you know there's a lot of emotions and attachments. Commercial, it's it either makes sense, the numbers make sense, or they don't. That's it. It's black or white. It's business more instead it's of ve- emotional. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And then to answer your question about the about the business um, and owning your own business so or owning your own commercial property. So you just need to be in business for two years um, and you, you just need 10% down okay. in order to purchase a commercial property. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's incredible. So It maybe, is. And how long does that process look like? I mean, typically it can be 45 to 60 days, depending, right? Kind of like a house then. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. It does take a little bit longer um, to finance than than an SFR deal, but it's worth it. Got it. In my opinion. What are some challenges, Rachel, that you have experienced in your career right now? Uh, And lessons that you've learned that have made you... uh, yeah i think the biggest thing for me is uh is gonna be in the commercial world it's very male dominated so sometimes they see me and they're like oh what does this latina know Mm. so it's kind of you know even even climbing up the corporate ladder right i mean i was i was with jp morgan in their commercial you know in their commercial division and and you know sometimes and and they were all amazing, of course, and and I don't mean just just in that in that um, it, with them, but just in general, just climbing up the corporate ladder. It's kind of like, what does she know about commercial financing? Like, what does mm. she know about commercial real estate? You know, a Latina that right. you know. Did you use that as a as a motivating mechanism? Oh, absolutely. To, I mean, it was them? just yeah, absolutely. <laughs> to me, it was just like that motivated me. That motivated me even more. Like, okay. And then um, after I left those three top banks, I was actually with a um, with a big brokerage for a short period of time, and there, it, that's where I experienced that. Where it's like, you know, they didn't. I didn't really get the tools and the resources. Um. And I still killed it. I still, within the first four or five months that I was there, I was already closing, you know, my deals. And I was like, you know what? That's when I saw the writing all over the walls. I'm like, I'm out. I'm going to start my own company and I'm going to, you know, be able to, to be a resource for everybody. And even then, when you're, when you're working for somebody else or you're, when you're working for another company, you have to go based on their terms, what right. they want, what they're looking for. And I wanted to be able to do my own thing. Like I want to be able to not just finance multifamily, not just finance industrial, not just finance your, you know, your owner, uh, your owner user. I wanted to finance your investors too. And a lot of banks don't really like investor deals. So I wanted to just have a wide variety. 
that's that's huge of resources right yeah because now you could be of more value to other people right? exactly yeah, yeah. right let me ask you this right in the corporate in in the corporate world what what are some some situations challenges that made you get out of your comfort zone because for you to excel like you were mentioning about that big uh that big company that you were a part of what did you do different that other people weren't doing that led you to that success because uh, it, you're, you're you're against a lot of a, a lot of males right so what were you doing different that they were not doing I mean, what were your habits? What, what, what how, how would that day look like? You know? I am, listen, I'm how Hispanic. Come on. <laughs> listen, I'm Hispanic. Yeah. It's in my blood. Yeah. <laughs> it's in my blood. I mean, I just, um, I was just out there. I was out there networking, building relationships. And I don't, I'm not about just being at every event. And mm -hmm. I, and I think I've said this before. I'm not, I don't like to be everywhere. I right. like, I like to meet with quality people. I don't like quantity because to me, what's important is having good relationships, right. deep relationships. And that's what I do, especially with my clients. I have so many clients that are repeated clients that continue to you know, bring business and continue, or they refer business, so on and so forth. But to me, it's all about relationships and it's all about follow-ups mm -hmm. and it's all about, you know, building that connection really. And just knowing, I mean, just, just the, the fact alone that we have such a wide variety of, of products and resources that alone, I mean, it attracts so many people, you know, there, there has been so many investors that have reached out like, hey, I'm trying to do seller carry back. You know, is that is that something that you're able to do? Yes, of course. Hey, I want to do, you know, this, but my credit is this. Can you do that? Yes, absolutely. Obviously, I'm not going to be able to finance everybody. Right. Yeah. But I, I, I'm not, you know, I, I can't work magic either, but I I could do what most can't. Got it. How do you stay on top of everything like in, in in your industry there's constantly all the time things changing like how do you stay on top of it yeah of course i mean you you that's that's part of the business right just like just like yourself and any other business owner how do you stay on top of things you got to stay on top of the competition you got to stay on top of the market you got to see you got to shift with with the market right you got to see where where the market is headed and where it's going so it's all about doing the research and just staying on top of everything. What are some difficult situations that you've had experienced in your business? Uh, <laughs> I would say, um, I would say this to be quite honest with you. I'm an introvert, believe it or not. <laughs> what? You're lying. <laughs> I'm an introvert, so it's really hard for me to do a lot of the marketing and put myself out there. To me, it's like, you know, I'm closing, I'm making money, like nobody has to, you know, like why do, why do I have to broadcast it? Right. But then at the same time, a lot of people have been telling me, "Well, you're being very selfish because people need to know that right how are people going to know who you are and what you're capable of if you're not showing it if you're Correct. not marketing it if you're not showcasing it so that's my biggest challenge is getting on camera and doing videos and educational videos yeah. right doing podcasts yeah. like having people know about me about my story where i came from what i do what I specialize in, it, it's been really hard to get it out there and to really market myself, really. Because yeah. <laughs> as an introvert, I'm just like, I just want to be behind the closed doors and just, you know, help everybody, as many people as I can. The people that know me great, the people that don't know me, I mean. <laughs> yeah. But no, I can't be selfish either. Right. I have to share, I have to share it with everybody and um, and let everybody know what I'm capable of, what I've done, what I've, what I've accomplished and the resource that I can be for them. Absolutely. Cause I, I, and that's great that you're noticing that, that because you could add so much value to, to people, especially with social media. Now your story, yes. you being an example, there's a lot of women that are going to be watching this episode that they're going to be like, man, like if she could do it, I could do it. Absolutely. Like, and well, anybody can do it. Absolutely. Yeah. Anybody can do it. It's a matter of, not giving up because there were so many times where I just wanted to give up when I first started my company. 
um, when I first started it, like give us some examples. What were some stuff that made you like, man, I want to throw in the towel right now. Yeah. Like, when, when I first started CRE, I had to start from scratch, right? Everything that I had built with those banks and, and the company that I was with, that was for them. I couldn't take that with me. That was, you know, they paid me to do that. So I had to leave everything that I had built mm. and start from scratch. And that was my biggest thing. And commercial, to build your pipeline in, com in the commercial space, it takes a while. So, um, and then, of course, the deals are not going to be smooth all the time, right? right. You're not going to get your perfect transaction. So there's a lot of bumps on the road. So there was a lot of times where I was just ready to pull my hair out. But it's like, nope. I'm not giving up. This is my passion. This is what I'm good at. And let me not be selfish and just think of myself. Let me think about the client. Mm -hmm. Like once we're done with this, once we're, we're, we're done with this transaction, like, you know, I'm saving them a lot of money right? and I'm, and I'm able to help them. So yeah, so there was a lot of times for sure. And then building that pipeline, building my, my network all over, like it was just, you know, there was a lot, there was a lot of hiccups, but I'm, I'm honestly really, really happy that I did. And it was the best decision I could have ever made. Like I'm happier than ever. And sometimes I even pinch myself like, oh my gosh, like I go out and I speak at events and I'm like speaking to a hundred plus people. And I'm like, I can't believe like I'm here for me. Like through my company, like I'm not with, you know, Bank of America or I'm not yeah. speaking on behalf of, That's you know, awesome. Wells Fargo. Like I'm speaking in behalf of CRE Capital. Like, wow, like it's amazing, right? That's huge. But at the same time, you know, you got to remain humble and just continue to just kill it and yeah. and people will eventually start to come to you. Yeah. Who are some people in the beginning that you learned from in, in your industry? I mean, and I mean, you learn as you go, right? Mm -hmm. um, there have been I've I've had a few mentors, um, you know, along the way. But um, you learn as you go, and you kind of start to pivot. Like, okay, what do what do I like from that? What do I not like from that? Like, what do I want to take in? You know, there's there's a lot. What are some of the most common mistakes that you did in the beginning? Gosh. Uh, within the company? Yeah. Huh. Like building it, yeah. <laughs> I would say, um, I would say follow ups. I wouldn't follow up. It's like in my head, I'm like, well, if they want it, they can, <laughs> they can reach out. They already know, you know, what it's, it's kind of <laughs> like putting my ego down a little yeah, bit. Yeah, like, yeah. you know, like, listen, at the end of the day, like they don't, you need to kind of we need each other. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So just following up and, and yeah, and building really yeah. and getting all the stuff out of the way from the beginning, like, you know, getting an assistant, getting your, your, your sales force intact, getting all of your marketing intact, getting everything, all of your systems mm -hmm. um, intact to make sure that your business is ru running smoothly. Because in the beginning, you're not like they say in the beginning, you're not the CEO, you're just the employee until you start hiring and still until you start building your team and doing right. all that, then you start to be the owner. So, you know, it's a little bit of that. But um, yeah, uh, like I mentioned, overall, it's been amazing. And it's the best decision I ever made. I, I couldn't be happier. Where do you think that you excel the most in the building relationships? Uh, do uh, getting creative with the deals where do you feel that it's like man this is what i love this is this this part of my this part of the business is what i truly love and i'm in my power um i think it's a little bit of everything to be quite honest with you i i'm pretty good at getting creative right and then i'm also good at building that relationship i'm also good at um uh you know, like I said, I'm an introvert, so I don't do that great at networking events, but I do well, um, I do well with like one-on-ones, right. And building that, that connection. Mm -hmm. So I'll, so I'll give you an example. So I love to travel, right. I love, love, love to travel. And so I tr I actually travel alone. And the reason why I do that is because, well, one of the reasons why I do that is because 
when you travel alone, you have no choice but to socialize and talk to people. And that takes me out of my comfort zone. Mm, I love that. So and you're in a completely <laughs> different place. Completely oh, different place. Gosh. Completely different place. Wow. And I travel, I mean, everywhere, everywhere. And everywhere I go, I end up meeting the most incredible people. Wow. Incredible people. Had I been with friends, I would have just been with them okay. and just been in my shell. And that's just that. But when I travel, it's just a whole different ballgame. I mean, I've made friends in Paris, in Dubai, Croatia. I mean, Fiji. I've gone everywhere and built relationships everywhere I've gone. And till this day, we still we still connect. We still talk. I love that. That's 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 actually really good because it forces you. <laughs> it forces it you. Hey, I gotta talk to you <laughs> yeah. now. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, it does. It does. What what has stood out the most of you traveling? Like what what, what country has been the one that's like wow? Like I want I want to continue going back to it. Gosh, I don't know. There's been there's been some for sure that have been on my on my list, but I don't know. Um, I would say Dubai. I really enjoyed Dubai. That was beautiful. Um, it kind of reminds me of Miami a little bit. Okay. Um, so the lifestyle, or yeah, yeah a little yeah, bit of everything. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm actually expanding to Miami, by the way. Oh, let's go! <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, and when so, are you doing that? Uh, hopefully the ending of of uh, what are we in April? Hopefully yeah. the ending of this month, beginning of May. Should yeah, so I'm excited That's about that. So. Yeah. What yeah. motivated you to do that? Why Miami? I was there in February okay. and um, I went to a woman in real estate cruise and um, the, the cruise ship was out of Miami and I was there and I just fell in love. I fell in love with Miami and I've been there before. I usually go every year, but this time around it was different. I don't know. It was just something different that I'm like, hmm. Did you go to a different area? What, what, what? And no, I mean, usually I stay around the same areas. Yeah. Um and I don't know, it just something about it. Just I was like, you know what? I need to build a footprint out here. And and it, ironically, which is crazy, I've been I've been getting deals from Miami, either whether it's a construction deal or, you know, they want to buy a business or but I've literally been getting deals. So I'm like, this is a sign. Mm. So it's, I'm making it happen. That's awesome. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank nice, you. Nice, nice, nice. So now you're going to be having a team out there and everything. Yes, right? I'm, that, that's yeah, the plan that's to the build plan. out there. Yes. Got it, got it, got it. Yeah. So when you're hiring, what do you look for for your, for, for your company, Rachel? I mean, I want them to have great qualities, right? Um, commercial is not easy, and it's not for everybody. And this is what I tell everybody, especially through the interview process, right? I, I make sure that they know what they're getting themselves into, right? Because there's a lot of people that are like, I want to do commercial. I want to do commercial. Once they kind of test the waters and realize what it's really all about, they're like, oh, yeah, this is not for me. Um, so, you know, I, I make sure that they, that they really have a passion for it like I do, right? So I want to make sure that we're sharing that passion and that we're also um, sharing, you know, I mean, everything about it, right? Are you good with numbers? Are mm -hmm. you good with people? Mm -hmm. um, you know, you got to think outside the box. So I would say those type of qualities and, and making sure that they're driven. But most importantly, um, I want to make sure that they're good people, that they're, you know, that they're good that they're good humans, right? right. Um, the other day I heard somebody say, um, say a speech about... Uh, in, in partnerships or in any type of uh, work environment, you want to make sure that you, that you know who you're working with, right? For example, if if this guy is out there cheating on his wife, how do I know he's not going to cheat on me mm -hmm. in business, mm -hmm. right? How do I know he's not going to do me wrong in business mm -hmm. if he's, you know, out there cheating on his wife? So I want to make sure that these that that they're good people that mm -hmm. at the end of the day that they value you that they have values and that they value their family that they value their friends their relationships that they build their business partners whoever it is but mm -hmm. i think that's really really important that's huge love it that. is love it that. really love is that. love that so uh, let's just say that uh i'm in a nine to five right now right same 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 scenario that that you were at what would you do different and what would you share with other people that are that want to take that jump into our entrepreneurship? They just do it. Just do it. <laughs> yeah. 
just do it. I, <laughs> there was, I contemplated for so long and that's what honestly like kept me. Like that's really what kept me. I had, you know, the VP title. I had, you know, I had everything. I was already up the ladder. I was starting to see a ceiling. I'm like, I'm going to go from this to what? Like I'm already all the way up the corporate ladder. Like where am I going to go? Hmm. And, um, And so I, and I already knew what I wanted to do. I already knew that I wanted to build this company that I wanted to, you know, build CRE capital, but I didn't know how to do it. I didn't know how to take that jump because I'm like, I have, you know, you have a high salary, you have, you know, you have that comfort you have that security you already have that lifestyle too right and i already have that lifestyle so it was so hard and then i'm like how do i rip the band-aid like how do you just take you know leave that security blanket and take the jump but Mm. honestly just take it and you'll figure it out as you go they say the entrepreneurs built the plane as they're jumping exactly build it in the process absolutely and honestly that's that's the best way to put it you just gotta take it and just go with it and don't give up even if times get tough do not give up like that's just the bottom line just keep going just keep going exactly that's awesome good great great advice any last words that you want to leave for our audience rachel it's been you gave you gave (laughs) us a lot of good this is some good stuff right now um i mean how can they how can they find you and when are you going to be doing more content? Because now, <laughs> now, now we're going to we're going to put you out there. You're going to yeah. about to declare how much content you're going to be putting out oh there. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> we're going to help you that's out with that. We got you. So. That's uh, that's very. Oh, I'm already getting sweaty. <laughs> my hands are starting to get, get ready. sweaty. We're shooting already. videos after this. <laughs> so um, definitely I'll be creating more content. I'll yeah. be uh I'll, I'll try to create more educational videos yeah. and um, motivational videos as well. And um, honestly, all I can say is if you're thinking of purchasing the commercial property, do it. Yeah. If you're a business owner and if you've been, you know, leasing for years, it's time to take it's time to take that jump and, and do it. A lot of business owners, you know, they come to me and they're like, yes, no, yes, no. What should I do? Just do it. If you're thinking, if you're in a nine to five and you're, if you're thinking of starting your own company, just do it. If you don't have the resources, you'll figure it out. Like that's just, that's just it. That's it. You and heard keep it. going, keep just going. do it and do it and do it. <laughs> that's right, yes. ladies and gentlemen. Well, thank you, Rachel, for, for being on our podcast today. A lot of takeaways today. Some of my main takeaways is that you gotta, you gotta bet on yourself, right? You gotta bet, bet Absolutely. on yourself and go all in. And things are always going to work out for you. You could have the lifestyle that you want. You could oh, build. Yes. You could travel. You could see different <laughs> places and yes. get yourself in, 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 in uncomfortable situations. So you could grow and you can see what you're made out of. So for more, make sure that you guys subscribe to our channel. Turn on the notification button. Share this podcast with someone because I know that it was a lot. It had a lot of insightful information. So make sure that you guys tune in. See you guys on the next one. Take care, guys.